हेलो हाई एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल लिटल अंडर रेटेड होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल टूडे वी आर गोना चेक आउट अ वीडियो ऑफ अक्षत टाइटल डैस वाई नेक्स्ट थर्टी ईयर्स विल कंपाउंड वेल्थ फॉर इंडिया एक्सप्लेनर सो ही हैज रिसेंटली स्टार्टेड दिस सीरीज ऑफ एक्सप्लेनर वीडियोज वेयर ही एक्सप्लेन अ पर्टिकुलर क्राइसिस और अ पर्टिकुलर इवेंट विच इज अबाउट टू हैपन और हैज ऑलरेडी हैपन द डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस बिहाइंड दैट इवेंट and uh, how could uh, the retail investors or the viewers can be benefited from the video or what could be the possible consequences or implications in near and long term future regarding that particular event so these videos are usually quite details and insightful and we not only enjoy watching these videos but there are some key important points as well which we try to take a note of Uh, as that might be useful later in our investment journey or our general thought process or uh, making our mind specific to a particular geographical event uh, which might not be considerable to us otherwise in general right so in this video let's see what he talks about regarding the wealth uh, compound for india in next 30 years let's jump to the video Hi everyone so I am in Goa and I recently met an American tourist here so I asked him that hey, how long have you been traveling to Goa so he said that you know what I am not traveling to Goa I am actually settled here so I got really intrigued I asked him that why have you settled in Goa so his answer was that I can actually live a five times better life in India compared to the US spending half the money that I would be spending if I were living in the US now this is actually a recent trend and a very intriguing trend if you would have traveled to southeast asia you would have seen a lot of americans leaving america and settling to these southeast asian countries if you have seen this trend do let me know in the comment box now the reason why i'm telling you this story is fairly simple that there is a macroeconomic explanation to this and it starts with this particular graphic so you would notice that back in 2008 if you aggregate the total balance sheet of five biggest central banks in the world it came out to be 5 trillion dollars but in the next 14 years approximately 22 trillion dollars were added into the economy now this move is actually hurting developed markets more than it is hurting emerging economies like india and in the next few minutes i will help you understand this complicated story as to why this is the case i will talk in a simple point wise format i will give you a lot of macroeconomic analysis which would be a combination of history finance and economics so do like this video and let us begin the story of india 2.0 why it is set to grow also if you are betting big on india's growth then you can check some of my small cases in the description box the link is there i have presented a collection of some of my favorite stocks and have given you the links to some of my favorite small cases so go check it out in case you are betting big on india so the first key reason why i am bullish on india is that india is witnessing something called as the productivity equation now what is the meaning of productivity equation it has been wonderfully summarized by this mckinsey article so if you read through this article you will see that throughout history economic growth has been fueled by two factors The first factor is the expanding nature of the workforce and second is their rising productivity. So we could term this productivity equation or hyper growth equation as population times productivity. Now this productivity equation has actually played out in history. For example, let me quote two examples. So the first one comes from the Persian Empire and it has been one of the most prosperous civilizations on earth. And if you check there is one intriguing fact about this Persian Empire which is that at one point in time it controlled more than 40% of the population on earth. The second example comes from the Romans and the Roman Empire stressed a lot on annexation of new lands. For example, Alexander the Great is known for his conquest and capturing new lands. Now why was capturing new land such an important aspect in the Roman civilizations or across all the kingdoms simply because of the fact that they believe that hey if we control more population we will be able to add more prosperity to the entire empire now this equation has somewhat forever stayed the same in fact the historic data categorically proves that as the population of the world has grown so has its gdp so taking a forward look it becomes extremely pertinent for us to study what is going to happen to the population of the world 30 40 years down the line so here is some scenario analysis that has been done by the 
United Nations. And even if you take a look at this yellow chart, you will see that this is a pessimistic scenario. This is an optimistic scenario. This is a moderate scenario. So let's assume and work with the most pessimistic scenario. You will categorically see that after 2050 is when the world population will start to fall. So till 2050, it is very likely that as the population of the world increases, at least in theory, the GDP of the world should increase as well. But where does India fit into this data? So India fits into this data actually quite beautifully. And here is the data to prove it. And you can see this from this yellow bar. So what you would notice is that the forecast suggests that India's population decline will actually happen post 2018. So we are roughly looking at a 50 year window where India's population is likely to grow. Point number two, that India picks up a winning advantage after 2050 because that is when the world population is likely to decline. But India's population will stagnate, not decline in that phase. So this is the first part of the productivity equation which comprises of number of people. But what about the second factor that is India going to benefit from that overall productivity increase in the world? So point number one, let me quickly talk about how productivity growth has happened in the world and going forward is that likely to continue or not so for this there is a very important chart and let us study that so this chart looks really haphazard but i will draw your attention to three phases on this chart which are somewhat a hyper growth phase so this is phase number one this is phase number two and this is phase number three now all these three phases give us a great explanation as to what had happened in history and how it has contributed to the growth of civilization and more prosperity across the world so this first phase was was when a lot of shipbuilding took place, the world started to trade more. In fact, this entire era is considered as one of the most innovative eras of human history, simply because of the fact that the financial markets were built. A lot of trading happened, a lot of cross-country movements started to happen. So this is an area where productivity increased also happened. Now, this second growth area comes from something called as industrial revolution. So this started back in UK and industrial revolution also added a lot of value value to the world trade. So this is the second layer of innovation that happened in the world. Now you will say that hey, Akshat, I do not see a lot of innovation happening in this phase because majority of innovation that were to happen has already happened. So what is the exact innovation that is happening at this point number three? That innovation is the innovation of fake money. And again, I will take you to this particular chart where I started the story from that approximately $22 trillion of fake money has been created after 2008 itself. But this trend started when? Well, this trend started somewhere around 1970s when the US moved away from the gold standard and that phase is called as the end of the gold standard phase. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that you know what? How is this real innovation? This is not real innovation. This is fake money innovation. Okay, so let me give you a parallel example and let me ask you a question. Please try to be honest in terms of answering that question. So do you think that people become more beautiful if they put on makeup? The answer is, and again, please be honest that the answer is yes, that they become beautiful if they put on more makeup and something similar is happening with money. Yes, this is fake money. And one day this debt bubble is going to burst. No doubt about that. When is that going to happen? I don't know, but till that point the governments and the feds are putting makeup on the economy and making it more beautiful. Hence this makeup is an innovation. So I 100% agree that the number of innovations that are happening in the world compared to 1600 innovations or early 1700, 1800 innovations, those are fewer. But with the increased velocity of money and with the creativity around money, that itself is adding to productivity. Now, where does India fit into this game? Well, the productivity of India is fairly low. Here is the data for you. And what you will notice is that this productivity increase for India, this spike or gradient on this slope has started to happen post 2002, 2003. This spike has already been created in a lot of Western countries because they benefited a lot with the creation of fake money in the period 1970s and now that fake money is actually becoming a problem for these developed economies but is actually proving to be a blessing for developing economies. So in order to understand this mini story you need to understand a finance concept called as the Sharpe ratio which in simple terms means that what return are you making per unit of risk. Now all of us understand that a lot of money has been printed by the feds a lot of governments including the Indian government but what has this money printing done to investors. 
that is a very simple question and if you know the answer you will be able to guess where i am going with this so basically what has happened is that with excess money printing comes a higher degree of inflation yes the inflation can be controlled in the short term long term mid term etc etc it can go up and down no doubt about that but to cut the long story short with increased sustained inflation it becomes difficult or more difficult for investors to beat the market or beat inflation so the singular goal of investors right now has become to beat inflation in fact some of the best mutual funds in the world are unable to beat inflation or keep up with inflation so what exactly is happening let me simplify so investors want to beat inflation that becomes their core goal of investing whenever you see fii's dii's investing in certain markets what is the objective with which they are operating they are operating with the objective of beating inflation now in the past since the general inflation in the economy was not skyrocketing it was somewhat managed there was limited amount of fake money it was easier for investors to beat inflation but right now they are given a target and are said that hey go beat inflation for that what do they need to do they need to take a higher unit of risk now this can be understood by looking at the fdi investments in india and here is a chart for you and what you would notice is that back in 2000 india's fdi was roughly 4029 crore then in the next 5 years it almost 5x in value which was a significant jump then there was a period of stagnation after 2008 where the economic crisis that happened due to 2008 it kind of derailed the market and the market stuck roughly 4 and a half years and then there was this another jump phase in the economy when the fdi investments in india grew quite aggressively so the point that i'm trying to drive home is fairly simple that in a period when the world is somewhat calm a lot of money is going to move to emerging markets why is that the case simply because we are in a sustained period of inflation yes the inflation will move from one country to the next country to the next country sub ebb and flow in the inflation will be there but due to increased adoption of fake money the world is going to stay in high inflation and in order to beat that the money needs to move to emerging economies and right now india is one such emerging economy where the sharp ratio makes sense that by investing in india because it is a smaller economy so to say it has very high likelihood of growing with time returns can be made by investors that actually beat inflation now this is somewhat translating into returns for india also for example take a look at this graphic and you will be suddenly surprised that hey why did india started to create so many unicorns just out of the blue well it happened because the year 2017 to approximately just before covid was a very peaceful period in the world economy and a lot of money moved to india and therefore you see that india ranks in terms of unicorn creation in 2020 now i have been peddling a lot of theories and helping you understand the future but let me back it up by presenting some kind of base because for any type of innovation to kick start and become truly revolutionary there has to be some kind of a catalyst a classic case in point would be the relationship between paytm's growth and demonetization in india that paytm actually exhibited a lot of growth in the year 2016 17 onwards simply because in 2016 demonetization happened so if we look for such catalyst factors in india that will propel india's growth what are some of the factors that we could think of so the first and foremost factor is the adoption of internet in india and here is the chart for you that india has one of the highest internet adoption rates in the world which is absolutely mind numbing now it is not as if that just because more number of people in india are using the internet india will become prosperous now india will become prosperous if there is a trend at play so what is the trend that i am talking about let me give you a parallel example of the sushmita sen model for example you would have hardly found youngsters in india before 1994 when sushmita sen became miss universe they would have hardly spent any time in terms of doing makeup buying beauty products etc etc but sushmita sen won the miss india universe contest a lot of mnc's entered in india and just the makeup market in india got revolutionized now something similar is happening when it comes to internal domestic consumer spending in india we have been a savers economy from the time immemorial in fact i am a very frugal person i save majority of my money i ask all of you to save your money also but the consumeristic culture actually leads to a lot of gdp growth no doubt about that does it make you poor in the long term yes but does it make the gdp 
of the country grow? Absolutely yes. Now with that, you need to take a look at some of the recent revolution that is happening in India. One of the key revolutions that is taking place is the UPI 2.0 model. Now, just 10-15 years back, it was very hard for us to spend money via credit card, debit card in India. In 2022, all of us are using Google Pay, etc, etc apps and we are spending more of our money. Why is that the case? Because the friction in terms of making payments have been reduced. This has positive and negative effects. The positive effect is that hey, there is more convenience and the negative effect is that the savings rate for us is going down. Going forward, what is the trend that is happening in the economy? Well, it is very simple. If you take a look at some of the salient points of UPI 2.0, you will see that credit card is being linked. There is UPI 123 facility, which simply means that you can make UPI payments even when you don't have internet and bunch of other innovations are coming, which will make these type of transactions more feasible and easy to use. And going forward, people are going to save less and spend more. So for the next 30 years, why is it that India will witness a golden age? Well, in summary, there are two factors. One is internal and one is external. From the internal side, it is almost given that India's population is set to grow and the population decline is likely to happen after 2070. So India will benefit a lot in terms of GDP growth because the population will also rise and the productivity levels will also rise. If we look at externally, then a lot of FIIs, DIIs are being made to play beat the inflation game. And with the creation of fake money, there are only a very few emerging economies that might give them that option. And India becomes one of the leading destination on that front. So with that said, if you are planning an investment strategy, do keep India in mind and keep on investing in India. You are likely to see a very strong return. And I keep on giving a lot of macroeconomic viewpoints on the YouTube private member community. If you deem fit, you can consider joining it. There is a lot of useful market updates that I share from time to time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you the next time. So the video was quite detailed as usual. We talked about a lot of factors by emerging economic economies like India or Indonesia or I don't know some others uh, will be a best place for the foreign institutional investments or some uh, outside uh, foreign investments uh, in the near future though the trend has already started in last four and five years or let's say last three four year we are seeing heavy money coming to uh, emerging economies right after 2016 and 17 specifically and he also touched upon two factors one internal and external regarding why the wealth will be compounding for uh, emerging economies like india the internal factor is that our population will be growing and accordingly our uh, productivity the manufacturing power will be growing uh, in terms of the innovation and r d right uh, the second thing he talked about was external factor by the way in the internal factor of population our population is supposed to growth of population is supposed to go down only after 2070 or nearby so till then we are looking forward if we consider currently the period of 2020 or 2022 around 47 48 or roughly 50 years of uh, population growth in a country like india which is already 1.3 or 1.4 billion people right so there is a lot to be added on in terms of productivity and human resources the external factor is there has been a lot of money printing that has been done roughly around 22 trillion dollars us dollars have been printed only after 2008 that is in last 13 14 years right so a lot of significant amount of that has been uh, i would say printed after this covid crisis to uh, provide people the consuming uh, power providing them the direct money in form of cash or bank account transfers right us government has done that and majority of the governments across countries have done that to uh, handle the crisis and to increase the demand right when the supply was a lot but the demand was very low because of the crisis so these were two internal and external factors external being that a lot of fii's money and uh, uh, institutional money will be coming to uh, emerging economies like India. He also touched upon two points which has accelerated or I would say propelled the growth of Indian economy. One of them is adoption of internet as the population of India has been rising. So as the data rates which have been uh, brought down by Jio and other telecom uh, uh, players due to competition and uh, uh, direct consumer benefiting from it the in fact the data in India is one of the cheapest in the world and also India enjoys the consumers in India enjoys one of the cheapest mobile phones available in the entire world 
second is the first phase of upi has been quite successful and uh, even the local merchants all of the consumers and retailers have adopted the upi transfers quite aggressively and there have been new players coming into the market like we have amazon pay beam upi google pay phone pay paytm right a lot of competition trying to stretch the market share from each other so this market is quite aggressively expanding and soon we'll be having second phase of upi which will facilitate the linking of credit cards and uh, uh, upi transfers without the internet uh, by dialing a number from mobile phone which will easily facilitate more number of transfers or transactions overall so these are some of the factors we talked about which will accelerate and propel the aggressive growth uh, in the economy and also the wealth generation for uh, developing economies like india it will be interesting to see how it goes forward but uh, we hope that it is something on the same lines which akshat discussed about we are going to check out some other videos as well till then please subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in next video till then take care bye bye